Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Timothy Lee. I'm a re research analyst with Red Cloud Securities. I'm delighted to host a Red Cloud webinar on mineral exploration and development in central and western Canada today. <clears throat> we will hear from Sherman Dahl, president and CEO, and Ross McElroy, chairman of SKRR Exploration. During today's webinar, they will provide an overview and outlook then we will take questions. You can submit your questions through the chat box at any time, and we will get to as many as we can. Before we kick things off, first, we need to discuss the fine print during this SKRR webinar. Forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements disclosure outlined on page two of the corporate presentation that can be found on the company's website, skrr.ca. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. Please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures pertaining to SKRR. So we have SKRR presenting today. The company has a portfolio of projects in Saskatchewan and recently added a project in British Columbia. The portfolio includes gold, nickel, and polymetallic projects, including projects in the Larange Gold Belt in Saskatchewan and a nickel target in the Ominica Mining District in British Columbia. With that, I now turn it over to Sherman and Ross to update our audience on the company. Thank you, Tim. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. My name is Sherman Dahl. I'm here with our chairman, Ross McElroy. Um, you know, we're here to talk about SKR exploration. And in an, in an overall summary, you know, Tim has done a good job in, in talking about our overall goals and objectives in terms of our interest in particular in Saskatchewan. You know, I speak to you know something that we've we've presented on many times is is the incredible mineralization in particular of something that we call the trans Hudson Corridor. The trans Hudson orogeny is an is incredible geological formation, which Ross will most likely allude to in, in his, his, pres his, his talks this morning, extends from the Homestake, uh, the, the massive Homestake gold deposits in, in the Dakotas, and then resurfaces in, into northern Saskatchewan into some significant uh, mineralization, which is evidenced by, in particular, the Flin Flon ore body, which was where the, the home of and the, the origination of Hud Bay mining, and also one of the flagship properties for SSR mining, which is the CB and Santoy deposits. In that incredible area where there's, there's a tremendous amount of, of gold and also very well-known VMS deposits, uh, the Flin Flon ore body, for example, was a, a significant and continues to be a, a copper producer in, in Saskatchewan, which the Trans Hudson Corridor hooks over in Saskatchewan into the, into the Snow Lake deposits in Manitoba. And SSR, uh, SSR Mining, which has got a, their flagship gold producing property, in, incidentally in the Flin Flon ore body, also produced something in the neighborhood of around six million ounces as as a byproduct when they were mining the, the copper deposit, in particular the triple seven deposit. So with this as a backdrop and as an introduction to SKRR, the SK of course stands for Saskatchewan and the, the R is the, the first R is Ron Nedelinsky and the second R is Ross McElroy. And Ross McElroy and Ron Nedelinsky are two of the Really, in, in, in the, in, with, with Ron Nedelinsky, the pioneers in exploring in Saskatchewan. Initially, Nedelinsky had gone into Saskatchewan looking for uranium. And when Three Mile Island, Three Mile Island uh, happened, it really turned the, Ron's focus into the gold sector, which, you know, Ron, through a number of companies, one that others may have heard of also as Mass Gold, has developed a significant amount of exploration work within Saskatchewan in the in in the Larange Gold Belt and all within this Trans Hudson corridor. So we set off on a mission with Ross McElroy as our, our chairman, and of course Ross is uh, very well known 
in particular in the in the uranium world, but also has had significant experience exploring for gold and base metals globally. And you know, Ross and Ron have both had this longer term vision that Saskatchewan was dramatically underexplored, in particular for gold. Very well known around the world for oil and gas, very well known for potash, very well known for uranium. But when we look at the extensive mineralization, for example, in other very well known geological formations in Canada, like the Abitibi, you know, Saskatchewan has seen like one one hundredth of the of the of the drilling that, that we've seen in in much larger, more well established districts. For example, like the Abitibi or the Red Lake area. So we know that it's an absolute fact that it's underexplored for gold, and it's probably underexplored for other base metals such as zinc and nickel. And um, so SKRR set out a number of years ago to develop a world-class portfolio of gold assets, zinc assets, and more recently, nickel assets. And we we built this company over the last couple of years by staking in some cases and also doing joint venture agreements. Um, one that we can speak to, for example, is the Olson Gold property, which we're very excited about. We've had multiple drill programs and had very good success in the Olson Gold property in the heart of the trans Hudson Corridor. And our partner that did all the drilling and all the work is Terra Logic. Terra Logic is, is very closely linked to a company called Eagle Plains, who's also very active in Saskatchewan, evidenced by their Fisher property, which is one of our neighbors, essentially. And the Fisher property had tremendous success and was recently bought out by SSR Mining. So we know there's a tremendous amount of interest in Saskatchewan. We believe that it's going to be the next you know, major gold producing area, or it certainly has the potential to be the next gold producing area in, in Canada. And so that's really the overall origination of the company. Over the last year or two, though, we've really been struggling with, with really tough resource markets. And a lot of the, the capital has moved up the chain, if you will, to more of the producing companies and companies that have resources that they can speak to. SKR has continued to be in the midst of exploration and as such, we're not as far advanced in, in terms of a resource. We do have some resources that are not 43101, and we have an extensive portfolio of high quality assets. But now really the objective is to protect our treasury. You know, we've got a relatively um, comfortable share structure, about 70 million shares. Our share price has been beaten up significantly into the two, two to three cent range. So. Um, you know, we think it's a, a tremendous opportunity for investors to enter not only the precious metal market, but also the base metal market. And in particular, the more recent acquisitions in both the Father Lake nickel assets, as well as our Dakar Lake assets, which are in northern British Columbia. So I'm going to ask Ross in a, in a couple of minutes to talk about some of those assets so that you can get a sense of you know, how excited he is about Saskatchewan and the trans Hudson Corridor and the opportunities for investors. You know, we're starting to see it's in, in, in some ways, January is like, it's like Christmas in January right now for a lot of the junior companies, especially the more advanced ones that are actually starting to put up some discoveries. So our corporate strategy is extremely simple as we've really trying to protect our treasury. We're sitting on approximately 1.2 million of cash with a decent share structure and a, you know, a world-class portfolio of exploration properties spanning gold and zinc and, 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 and nickel. So just to you know, advance the slides here a bit, um, we've already talked about the cautionary statements and, um, and, so, and I've given you an overall general view of SKRR and how excited we are to be in the exploration business and how we're excited to be in the gold and base metal business. And I've also given you a sense of our overall structure. But you can see from this slide, one of our maiden drilling programs where we intersected over seven meters of 3.4 grams and including 13 grams per ton. And this is typical of Saskatchewan where you've got you know, very high grade you know, gold in Saskatchewan. And of course the challenge is to, is to get in and, and to do enough drilling so that you can you can prepare ultimately a resource. 
We also had acquired where we've got 100% owned as another example is our Manson Bay property where there was historical results of 10 meters of 15 grams per ton. And again, we also did drill programs in, in, in at the Manson Bay property as well. So some very exciting opportunities in, in, in Saskatchewan. We all know that, you know, gold is, is something that's, um, you know, significantly becoming more interesting to, to investors. You know, we've got, you know, a world today that um, is really starting to point to investors having a good exposure to gold as a hedge against all kinds of things. And, you know, not only inflationary pressures that we've seen in the market, but also just, just the overall state of the world in terms of uh, global stock market uh, exposure for investors. I think it's absolutely critical that investors have some exposure to the gold and precious metals. And more recently, but you know, in the last couple of years into the EV market, when you change transportation, you change absolutely everything. So we strongly believe in, in, in exploring for assets like zinc and assets like nickel, which are going to be, you know, obviously, you know, as Robert Friedland said, it's revenge of the miners. And, you know, we're starting to see investors really look at, at the essence of the old economy. And if you're going to invest in the old economy and if you're going to own base metals and precious metals, you know, you really should be looking at, at, at an area like Saskatchewan. It's constantly rank, ranked as one of the top jurisdictions globally. So I think for investors, you know, if I was to sort of conclude in some overall statements is, you know, look for companies that have the right people. And SKRR certainly has a proven leadership team it's, it's a combination of the geological brilliance of guys like Ron Nedelinski and Ross McElroy, evidenced by, you know, all the work that they've done over all the years. And, you know, both Ron and Ross, you know, I, don't, I can't even add up probably how many discoveries they've been involved in, but it's, it's a lot. And, it, and I think Ron at one point was attributed with at least four discoveries, which is typically about four more than most of them. And, uh, you know, Ross just continues to build his discovery um, demonstration over the years. So, you know, you have to have the right people. The, the next P, I guess you could say, is you have to have the right projects. And that's where, in, in the case of SKRR, we're, we're really focused in Saskatchewan, which is underexplored, emerging, and, and a safe jurisdiction. And then finally, and this really, this slide is probably more at the end, is you have to look at the capital structure when you're going to invest, which is really the price. So you've got the, the you got to have good quality people. You have to have wonderful projects, and you have to have and you have to pay the right price. Well, the market's handling the price for you because you know our shares are trading at all time low. You know we do have a comfortable treasury, but we really need to step out in a big way in 2023, execute some joint ventures. Um, you know, look at unique ways of raising capital so that we can explore some of these exciting properties. And we are seeing some activity. Mass Gold, one of our neighbors, is in, in numerous discussions. They do have a million ounces of gold on the books in Saskatchewan. We think that those could be catalysts for us because of the world-class portfolio we have. And, and, and one of the areas that we find very exciting is our nickel assets, which Ross is, is very in tune with. And we also have a very interesting zinc asset. So we think that you know the door is going to start to open and people are going to look for Saskatchewan good quality assets and good quality management teams and, and we believe we're well positioned in that way. So here's that overall slide that I was talking about, the Transats and Corridor, and you can see the, the range of properties we have in, in, in the heart of Saskatchewan. So with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Mr. McElroy and you know we're, we're pretty flexible in terms of how we can go back and forth and present, but you know I'm pleased to introduce Ross McElroy to talk about some of our properties. Good. Well, thank you very much, Sherman. Um, appreciate the uh, the introduction. I I think before I you know start off talking about projects, I do want to reemphasize something that Sherman already mentioned, which is the jurisdiction of Saskatchewan. So not only are you blessed with um, having geologically some of the most uh, you know incredible mining districts, um, if you think of the Flin Flon Snow Lake area probably the world premier VMS uh, district. Um, uh, and, you know, and, I, and when you look at the, um, 
even the Athabasca uranium uh, is really associated with with the, the Trans Hudson corridor. So this this is a feature that Sherman already alluded to at, at the beginning, and this just kind of puts it visually um, in place here. So we have a, a total of of nine projects in the company. Um, eight of them focused in Saskatchewan. We um, we have reached out and uh, starting to look at in other areas as well. So hence the new nickel project in, in British Columbia as well. So altogether the total portfolio, nine projects. Uh, five of those, uh, those projects are essentially precious metal focused um, gold primarily. They're in a lot of cases, there's gold and some uh, base metal such as copper associated Manson Lake, for example, is a, is a good example where you can have high grade gold, also uh, uh, copper as well. So, um, and then we we have projects such as um, you know the the Watts Lake zinc deposit, which is a historic deposit, um, one that we have uh, yet to convert over to, you know, 43101 standards. It, it's a, it is a deposit, um, uh, but, you know, eventually we'll, we'll put some holes into, into Watts Lake and be able to convert that over into, um, into one that we can, we can talk about under 43101 uh, uh, compliant rules. Um, and then to the north, there's the Nickel Project's Father Lake comes to mind, there's a new one on there, um, Carp River, which is right in the same district as, as Father Lake. Um, you know, very exciting uh, uh, discoveries, high grade nickel, uh, some cobalt as well. And, you know, just to, to validate, you know, the, the thesis here, I mean, we are like Rio Tinto's now starting to explore rather aggressively in the same area on the the same the same trend of, of rock that, that we have our properties on Father Lake and Carp River. So it is something I think we're certainly in the right district if we can attract the attentions of uh, of Rio Tinto for looking at the same same kind of uh, mineralization. I think you're you're in the right neighborhood, obviously. But here's the Trans Hudson corridor. You look Sherman already talked about home state down to the south in, in South Dakota with you know you know 45 million uh, ounce producing past producing gold deposit. It does show the potential for hosting giant high grade ore bodies, um, gold ore bodies. And that's really what we're sort of looking for in the case of Olson, where Sherman mentioned we've had several drill campaigns, which have only continued to upgrade and upgrade the project as we move along. Uh, Thingo Lake's another project that comes to mind with high grade gold discoveries on it. Um, just in, in the interest of trying to be a bit more broad in this discussion, we won't get into too much of the details of what we've had, but um, I will just show this is the Olson uh, property near the, the, the uh, village of Larange. Um, uh, we have had multiple drill campaigns on it. Each one of them have been able to uh, continually upgrade the property. You can see where in the past few years we have been focusing our drilling on the Olson showing, uh, the point showing, Tuscan and Siskin. I mean, there's there's just a number of, um, of excellent, excellent uh, uh, target areas now that we've, we've tested with drilling. And you can see on the left side, these are some of the bullets of some of the incredible results that we've seen right off the, off the bat, um, you know, including you know, very wide intersections up to almost 20 meters on the on Olson that, um, uh, you know, over a gram. But what I think what's key here is you have uh, intervals within these wide intersections of very high grades. So we're looking at, uh, at you know, in particular zones that, that run up to almost 10 grams per ton over a meter, sometimes a meter and a half. So they, they do look uh, pretty impressive. And so it is a certainly a project that we want to go back back to and, and continue to um, to do some some drilling. Irving is an interesting project um, that we have. When you think of the the you know the the major uh, miner in the area SSR mining, you know that that are uh, operating the the CB and Santoy 
gold deposits, uh, we're neighboring on those grounds. So we have uh, a large land package just to the south of CB Santoy Gold, and then immediately to the north too. We have we uh, more recently staked a couple of um, of claims up in that area as well. So this is uh, you know CB and Santoy themselves are very large. Um, you know, high grade uh, gold. It's the kind of, uh, you know, the projects that really do, do put Saskatchewan on the map. Being nearby and looking at exactly the same geology, basically that's wrapping around an intrusive pluton. I think, you know, we should be able to, um, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're aiming to duplicate the, the same kind of results. And I think it, it has a geologic potential to do so. A number of showings have been found on on this ground, and um, it does beg for uh, for a lot more advanced exploration here, uh, including drilling, um, to be able to continue to to move those projects forward. Manson um, is a is a project that I really quite like. You're a little closer to the uh, the Saskatchewan Manitoba border. We're about 40 kilometers northwest of the the town of Flin Flon, which is famous for um, hosting you know world-class BMS deposits um, so we're right in the same neighborhood we're just off the highway that does go to um, to Flin Flon so you have infrastructure you have uh, a very geologically impressive project with Manson there's already a gold zone that has been uh, historically um, drilled and uh, had a um, a resource estimate actually of, of high grade gold on it um, that does predate 43101 implementation of rules. So, you know, so we can't rely on that um, as being a, considered a deposit, but, you know, the fact is we can actually drill in that same area, upgrade it to, um, to current 43101 standards. And I think we would have a very impressive gold zone. Uh, you know, this is highlighted by Historic results, um, 10 meters at uh, almost, you know, well, just over 15 grams. It's almost half an ounce of gold over, uh, you know, very impressive width. So that's the kind of potential that we do see in the Manson Bay gold zone. Um, we have had a, a drill campaign in, in uh, there, I guess it was uh, about a year or so ago. Um, we we saw some nice results. We tested a long strike of the, of the the gold zone, and we were able to um, to show that mineralization does continue uh, further to the south and had been, you know, uh, illuminated in the past. Um, so it's certainly an area that we're really quite excited about, and it's a, it's a large piece of ground with a number of showings uh, on it. So th that um, highlights probably what I'll talk about on the gold side. Um, there are other projects, and I'm, you can see I'm just sliding through but in the interest of time I'd, I'd want to uh, talk a little bit too about our our base metal side so here is a, a picture of of our father lake project this is high grade nickel just north of the town of um of uh, stony rapids so in northern saskatchewan um you'll see to the southwest of us that rio tinto is very active in um in looking for high grade nickel as well. So you have attracted the majors uh, to be looking at the same targets that we have. Um, what, we've, what we have on our Father Lake project, uh, I think the most encouraging place to start is the historic Dumas showing. So there's Dumas A, B, C, and D. So four uh, distinct discrete showings along a, a um, an, an interesting norite sill and norite is really the the key host for um high grade nickel and cobalt uh in, in this type of setting it's really not unlike what boise bay is in uh, in labrador one of the world you know largest high grade nickel cobalt deposits that's the same kind of geology that we're looking at here on father lake um and i think we're off to a good start you can see uh, drilling and trenching results in Dumas that are, you know, uh, up to two two percent nickel, um, you know, and intersections in, in close to surface drilling, uh, you know, up to two meters, um, and in some cases four meters. So 
it really is a, a, a target area that we're interested in. Um, we think there is a potential to, to make high grade or discover high grade uh, nickel cobalt deposits in this area. Not shown on this map, but in the same vicinity, almost where the SKR logo is, um, just to the east of, of the Rio Tinto ground, is our newly staked Carp Lake, or sorry, Carp River project as well. So, and which has historic high grade showings on it. And in fact, is the trend of, um, of norite that um, basically hosts a Curry Lake access late deposits so they they trend onto the the ground that we have in, in carp river so we're really quite um quite excited about the you know the the nickel portfolio we have in saskatchewan um uh, i just want to um quickly talking of, of nickel and keeping to the same theme of commodity in british columbia we've recently um uh, joint venture, I guess, uh, optioned into the ground of, of the Nickel Peak um, showings. And you can see this northern uh, northern BC, again, the right kind of jurisdiction for hosting large, high-grade uh, nickel projects. We have a, a, a very good um, ground package in there. And in fact, we've even added to it. So we're now looking at, at over, um, you know, uh, 3,300 3, hectares of, of land, nickel perspective land in uh, in northern BC as well. Um, I will back up here and just talk briefly about Watts Lake. Watts Lake, now we're heading back to Saskatchewan again, but the commodity this time of interest is zinc, high grade zinc. Um, this is a historic deposit, again, predates the 43101 rules. And so we'll, we'll have to do a little bit of work in order to convert that into a um, a modern day deposit that we can refer to, but it is extremely prospective. Um, we're looking at the Boris Lake trend. There's a number of holes already in there, uh, some surface trench results. So this is a, a zinc mineralized zone that, um, that it, I think it, it's basically a VMS deposit. Um, and it has, uh, you know, some surface trenching um, you see the results up to over 20% zinc. Um, and it's also associated with high grade silver as well. So nearby in trench number one, uh, sorry, trench number eight, we're looking at silver um, assays up to 184 grams. That's, uh, what does that work out to? Almost five or so ounces per ton silver. So they're extremely high grade. You're looking at, at uh, at zinc assays, zinc lead of, of over 20% in some cases. There has been a number of drill holes along there. You've outlined the mineralized trend of over four and a half kilometers in four separate zones. This is all drill tested and uh, drill delineated, wide open, I might add, um, at depth because the, the drilling has been very near surface. Um, the, the main zone is uh, continuous mineralization of, of just over a kilometer strike length. Pretty impressive and, and certainly a deposit that, um, you know, I think in, in the making one, if we put um, our time and effort into that, I think um, Watch Lake will certainly become a world-class VMS uh, zinc discovery as well. Um, probably we'll leave it at that, just looking at the, um, you know, the, the timing on, on the presentation. I, I really wanted to, give you a sense of the portfolio that we have, the nine projects and understanding that we really do run a spectrum from high quality precious metal gold uh, project focused projects and also key uh, base metal zinc and, uh, and, and nickel properties as well. Sherman, I'll probably hand it back to you and then, um, and then I guess we're, we'll wait, look for uh, Q and A. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would add, Ross, is just to highlight our advisory board from Brian Skanderbeg to Ron Nedelinski, <coughs> Craig Roberts, who is on the, one of the founders of Newfound Gold, Michael Murphy, who is one of the founders of Torex Gold, you know, Mike Halverson, one of the most seasoned investors on the planet in terms of uh, he's also the chairman of Orzone Gold. Brian's an interesting advisor for us as well because he was involved with Claude Resources, which got bought out by SSR. So we certainly have a stack team. We have a stack portfolio of properties and 
and uh, we're we're trading at bargain basement prices, and you know we're looking to somehow you know work towards capitalizing on all these assets in 2023. Back to you, Tim. Great. Uh, thank you very much, um, Sherman and Ross, for the informative presentation. Uh, we'll now start the Q and A portion of the of the webinar. A reminder to everyone on the line: you can submit your questions into the chat box at any time. Uh, we already do have a few questions. Um, one: uh, What is the budget for 2023 across the various projects? So the, the, you know, I can comment on that. The the budget currently for 2023 across all the projects is probably about you know no more than 300 thousand which is just sort of maintenance of, of the projects. You know, we are exploring, again, other alternatives and ways to get into to to work on some of these properties. But, you know, drilling is is just not in the cards for us. Nothing that we can we can talk about until we have some kind of an overall, um, you know, strategy with some kind of a JV or a capital raise. I will say that, you know, there, 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 there is we're exploring some opportunities to do some smaller work programs. You know, I point to, for example, um, nickel North, I think it was that recently went in and had some grab samples of very high grade nickel. You know, we know we could go into father Lake and do some grab samples, but you know, we're, we'd, we'd like to do something that's a little bit more significant to it, to advance these. And that's really going to be um, capital market dependent. So relatively low budget for anything right now. Okay. You know, we want to really protect our treasury. Sure. What is the availability of staff and rigs uh, for exploration uh, in, in Northern Saskatchewan? I'll let Ross comment on that. Yeah, I can address that. Um, you know, it is, uh, it is fairly busy, but we've got a, a, a number, you know, we've been operating in Saskatchewan, you know, uh, through through SKR and, and different companies that both Sherman and I are, are involved with. Um, so I think we have a long standing um, uh, good relationship with all of the, the various uh, service providers and um, contractors out there. Um, you know, we're, we're a, a go to name. They're always looking for quality companies. I'm really not concerned with being able to um, to say get drill rigs um, get you know assemble teams get uh, you know able to work it's really a function of um, of having the capital in which to do the projects as Sherman mentioned but um, I, I'm pretty sure with the connections we have and with their um, you know our you know with all the the top uh, service companies in Saskatchewan I'm pretty sure uh, we would be able to pull the trigger on on being able to uh, to do exploration work if we if we have the capital to do so. Absolutely. Um, one specifically here: What are the next steps for further exploration work at the Ethingo property? Sure. If you don't mind, I'll I'll uh, address that too. And uh, that, that's interesting. Um, uh, it, that's actually one of my pet gold projects. I think it's a uh, it's a real sleeper. Um, it's one uh, we stake uh, had a game with with significant amount of historic work on it. In fact, it's probably worth slow, uh, showing the slide. And I think if we can bring that up, I think it would be probably page um, 15 of, of the deck. And yeah, well, maybe I can, I'm not sure if I can navigate this or if you, if you can, but the thing go, we have done a little bit of, uh, let, let me, do, I'll just uh, navigate here to it. It is one that we've, um, again, there's historic work on it. We did a little bit of work, uh, I guess about a year ago, um, just tightening up, uh, you know, the geophysics in, in order to, you know, getting ready for a drill, a drill campaign. I think we are drill ready on, on a thingo. Um, you know the, the the area that's that's most exciting is down in the southern central area where you have the um, the Athingo Lake main zone uh, with the you know it, it's already had some drilling some pretty exciting results um, I think the best of the historic was seven and a half meters at uh, over you know 11 grams per ton that looks to be wide open it's certainly wide open at depth and uh, 
something that has never been tested is, is uh, further along strike. Um, you know, we see indications of fault offset on this zone um, to the, you know, just to the east of the, you know, the, the end of the drilling on the, um, on the main zone, the historic drilling. It's something I, I would love to get after. I'm pretty sure that the Thingo main zone is just the, the scratch, the start of, uh, of what appears to be a, a pretty significant um, ore body, certainly how it feels like to me. And uh, again, it's, it's a matter of, um, you know, if we had the capital or had the money for it, I'm pretty sure Thingo would be one of our high priority uh, projects to get in and start drill testing particularly focusing around the, the main zone. But I think we're drill ready at this stage. The work we've done to date has set us up very well for, um, for being able to, uh, to advance to, to drill work. And that work would be focused on building and delineating a deposit. Great. Um, and one interesting question here, but uh, given your portfolio of projects, um, if you had to choose just one to be the sole focus, which would it be and why? Okay, uh, I'd probably, I'd probably leave that to Ross. Okay. I think I'd probably leave that, that question to Ross just because it's a more geological target question. Let me be a bit more broad in that. And I'd say depends which commodity, but if we're after gold, um, you know, and, and, and this is just more of my my uh, spidey sense as to which ones I think have the, the potential to turn into a, into a deposit. Um, gold, I kind of, I think they're all top quality. I would put my um, my bet onto a Thingo for the one being able to host the, the largest, um, maybe high grade deposit of, of, of the bunch. Like, again, it, as I said, it was kind of a, I think it's one that we like. Um, a lot it's it's outside of the area of the other projects um so it's a bit more of an isolated project but geologically i really like the potential of of a thing go for gold um nickel uh father lake carp uh, river nickel peak i mean take your take your pick they're all excellent projects um, father lake is has high grade nickel on it carp river right on the uh, trend with the work that rio tinto is doing Nickel Peak, you're in an exciting uh, nickel area. Zinc, there, we really only have one project, but it is a deposit for Watts Lake. So it's really the ones we've talked about in this presentation. Um, so that's kind of, it's hard to pick one property, but I do think there are flagships in each commodity that, that we were looking at. Great. Um, and I think you had touched on this, um, and sometimes these things are covered by confident you know, confidentiality agreements, but are you, are you in any discussions with, with potential partners uh, to help fund exploration on your projects? We are, we're all, you know, there's, there's nothing that we can, you know, obviously if there's anything public, you know, we're, let's say we're, we're always in some discussions. Um, so yeah, I, I, the, the answer to that would be yes. Okay, great. And one little open-ended question here, but what is the long-term strategy for the company? Um, would you want to, um, if you have a, a big discovery, would you want to advance it and eventually become a mining company? Or would you look to advance the projects and then sell to a producer? I think the, you know, really the overall objective has always been the same is, is to, is to, is to have, a, have a big discovery. You know, we really, we're, we're continue to be very excited, for example, about Olson and Manson Bay. These orogenic gold deposits are of that nature. It's, you know, you really do have to find that, you know, you're like, the, I don't know what the, the saying is, Ross would probably know better than me, but, you know, you're always one drill hole away. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, I mean, I get excited just listening to Ross talk about a thingo. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I think what really the overall objective has always been is to go into a, a not moose pasture mining, but always what Ross would call properties of merit. You know, you look at a thingo, it's already got 50 some holes. It's been explored by Claude, it's been explored by Newmont. You know, they, these people are in there exploring for a reason and they're smart people. So I think the, the overall goal has always been to get some, you know, ridiculous discovery like the Santoy Gap, which, which really made Claude resources and have the company bought out for, you know, 400 million bucks. I mean, that, that's, 
<laughs> that's that's really the business that we're in. We've got multiple targets, and you know, and we we did as as much drilling as probably humanly possible for a junior, and then kind of fell into some, some tougher markets. So I think that that overall objective is still the same: is to go and have a significant discovery. You know, we're not interested in probably building a mine. You know, we're interested in having a discovery and and you know and advancing the company that way. But <clears throat> would we build a mine for sure? You know, and if you know, especially with the capability of of Ross and and, and other people that are involved in the company, that wouldn't be. You know that wouldn't be a crazy thought, but it's not our initial objective is to have a significant discovery. Great. Well, I think that's all the questions we have uh, for today. <laughs> so I'd like to th again thank Sherman and Ross for presenting today, and thanks to everyone on the line for tuning in. Uh, just a reminder: Red Cloud Securities will be back Tuesday afternoon when our webinar series continues with Sky Harbor Resources presenting. Tuesday, January 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Thanks so much.